Hey everyone, my name's Chris Hendy. I'm Damien Hall. And guys, obviously we, me and Damien work together. We, I'm uh, Damien's sort of strength coach. I've been working with Damien for a number of months now. Um, obviously Damien's a, a very well accomplished ultra distance uh, runner. And I think we have so many conversations in the gym that we wanted to kind of just take a, take a minute and kind of just kind of ask each other these questions face to face in terms of training, lifestyle, everything else in between. And kind of just kind of share this these the answers with you i think um i think damien as a coach um works with a number of athletes myself obviously i work with a lot of athletes diff running uh, running different dis distances but i think a lot of the questions and the answers today i think will resonate with all of you i think in some shape or form um and there's a lot of questions around strength training and ultra distance running and I guess we just want to make it a little bit clearer as to what we do, how we do it, um, and how, I, how my, 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 our business, Strength Endurance, go about kind of integrating it into a lifestyle and understanding the requirements of a runner. So uh, I think Damien's got some great questions. I've got some a couple of questions, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. All right then, you ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, why, should, why should most runners or all runners strength train, do additional strength training? I think, I could sell it in a number of different ways, obviously, but I think the one thing is to keep doing the thing you love. So I think like in terms of staying healthy, staying strong, staying just stay, just staying injury free, I think like so many people think about the the obvious benefits like gaining more strength, more power, more speed, but actually it's more about just longevity in, in a sport, like being like, you know, you know, just be keeping remaining injury free. I mean, the running community is riddled with um, injuries of all shapes and sizes and yeah. and i think the most important thing is about showing someone how they can go about kind of treating themselves in a certain way like getting them if they have a, a certain lower limb issue like how can we get them stretching that area how can we get them strengthening that area bringing more balance to their body simply to keep allow them to to keep running i mean on top of that um some recent re research showed that additional strength training could improve your running economy Admittedly, it was kind of three to five percent, but if you're adding three to five percent from lots of different areas at the same time, um, and also I believe it's going to help you run with good technique. You know, if you're more upright, uh, for example. Um, so for me, there's at least three reasons to do additional strength training. Yeah, um, um, I know, I'm just going to like because again, but guys, like when it comes to that kind of stuff, like when it comes to uh, and integrating it and starting a strength training journey, like that's what I want you to think about more than anything. I think is just making sure that you are it's 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 just we're just trying to make you a more well-rounded runner so you can keep running but in terms of running economy running efficiency improving that that all comes part and parcel with just kind of moving better in the gym and then transferring that movement in uh, out into the road or out into the trail yeah and i've actually found it more more enjoyable than i thought chris um <laughs> i it took me years to build up the courage to go into a gym because you know, I want to run outside, but it's it's been more enjoyable. You get you get a nice boost from you know one week. You can't you can only do three of something. The next a week or two later, you can do five of them, yep. and, and you feel good about that. Um, so that. That's helpful too. What are our like? I mean, it's, this is good because obviously, like working with Demo, here's someone who's done so many things already with his in his career. Like, it's like, what's my role with him? Like, what 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 can I possibly give Damien that he already hasn't done? And for me, it's obviously again, it's that can I edu give him some education does it help you with maybe um, understanding the benefits of it and like how you can start to treat yourself a little bit maybe do a little bit of extra work here you know, just create a little bit more strength and power in certain areas but also kind of just um, eradicate a few imbalances maybe so what, what did we find we found a few things didn't we well I think possibly possibly relating back to my football days I, basically my right the, my right side is slightly weaker than my left we found definitely the hamstring possibly the glute was weaker so yeah you've shown me some really good ways to sort of isolate and especially do do single leg work, work that, that um, seems to have repaired things um, yeah I was worried that that would lead to some sort of breakdown it possibly has in the past um, and yeah I feel feel stronger for that yeah. um, so that's good um, I guess those sort of those sort of areas. I guess a lot of people will find that they've probably got those uh, hamstring tendinopathies and glute. They've been told their glutes aren't working, but I think again with you, it's just balance, isn't it? Like over those long, long, long distances, like you know, the smallest issue can be the can become the mm. major, oh, yeah. major problem, can't it? And yep, well, can obviously DNF you if in, mm. in, the, in the worst case scenario. So yeah, I think it's just balance, isn't it? I think I bring bring in, but I think. I've worked quite hard just to try and make sure that you understand. Like, more the more you understand it, the more we can, uh, the more, um, the more you can then relay it onto your other athletes and everything. So. Yes. No. Definitely. Um, so I've got some questions. I suppose you know, 
if, if, if a runner's coming to strength work for the first time fresh, you know, what exercises should they do for, for the, you know, to get the most, most out of it? What, what could you name sort of three or five? What, what should people do? <clears throat> Good question. Uh, it's going to be individualized to a certain degree. So, I mean, I think the best thing you could do is kind of just go do a little bit of a movement screen on yourself. Like, or you have an understanding of what your weaknesses might be. So again, it's dependent on the individual's kind of areas that you might want to work on. So, you know, um, but most runners, I would say it's going to be some form of single leg training. So doing some form of like Bulgarian split squat. So one foot in front of the other, re- re- loading that, that single leg, single leg squat, single leg uh, RDLs or single leg deadlift. You know, when you're training that single leg hamstring or uh, single leg musculature, anything like that is really going to be quite, make a profound difference. Um, something as similar as a goblet squat you know when you hold the weight across your chest and sit nice and deep into a squat under load fantastic at bringing balance to your hips uh, like moving your body through big range of motion like I think one of the hardest things with a run over they get tighter and tighter and tighter over time is that fair to say I I don't know like yeah yeah I feel that yeah 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 I don't know like and I think I just I think getting into a squat on a regular basis loaded with weight with with body weight i think anything you can do like that it's going to help you just move move more freely through range of motion so i think the squat um single leg work and i'm a big fan of sort of doing some, some resistance band work you know some of the, something that actually gets you priming and activating those kind of key muscle groups that you want to hit and not just your kind of glutes and your hamstrings in the area but upper back so like I mean, we, yeah. talk, we talk about that a lot, don't we? Yeah, and when we, we get into those kind of positions with the poles or with the, pack, with the packs or whatever, big fan of opening up the thoracic, open up, opening up your back. So, um, yeah, I think at home, like something as simple as some, sing, some single leg work, um, squat, um, and some form of activation work or uh, priming work with the resistance bands, uh, like a banded pull apart or some uh, banded lateral walks. Um, there, there's some great little, great little exercises there for you to be starting out with. Thanks. Next question. What about, as people get into strength work and they, they sort of do it over a period of weeks, what should they be thinking about in terms of kind of reps and, and if there's any weight involved and, and sort of periodizing it? Like, how does a runner, do they go and do 10 of something or do they do 5 or 27 or something yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, without yeah. stopping? Or how do people approach that? I think we call it, like, uh, you want to condition your body to anything. Like, I guess, like we're running, you want to condition yourself. So when you first start out with any type of strength training, keep the, the reps and sets really simple. You know, 3 by 10, 3 by 15, you know, real simple numbers just so you can start to work through with adequate rest in between. So 60 second recovery, you know, recovery in between sets. But yeah, I'd say sets of 10, sets of 15 is, good, is a good place to start. First couple of weeks, let your body get conditioned to the range of motion because there's nothing worse than that feeling of muscle soreness because you know after a session where you've done too much so start really simple with the sit with simple numbers like 10s and 15s then it's somewhere down the line around four weeks into a program you know and that's probably if you're doing it twice a week that's about eight sessions you're probably looking at then upping the ante a little bit you want to create some new stimulus new adaptation in the muscles so you might want to start adding a bit of load or a bit of complexity to it that's when you might drop the reps down to sort of that strength phase where you're looking at five to eight reps three to four sets but you've got to apply some form of intensity some progressive overload to actually allow some physical change like the reason you're doing it is because you want to be stronger or more powerful so you've got to start actually challenging the muscle tissue to change there's so many people we work with who have been following the same program for years mm. and they and they they say to me oh strength training doesn't really work for me or i do it but i don't really see the effects of it it's because you haven't really changed it it's like saying you've done the same run program or you've done the same run route for two years mm. and you're not seeing much change in your ability so um yeah so 10 sets of three three to four sets of 10 to 15 reps four weeks later five weeks later looking at that um new block where you're looking at kind of three to four sets of five to eight reps increasing a little bit more load increasing intensity and then we again we, we're looking for that strength phase and then later on down the line you may start talking about um bringing in more powerful power-based exercises where the reps drop even lower um sometimes but generally you're working in that strength block for a lot of people that five to eight rep range and that's what you kind of work in you yeah. work in that kind of five to eight reps we build it up drop it off for a week build it back up again drop it off again so we're just constantly looking to keep you strong and then something we discuss a lot is kind of <coughs> where do you fit that in with your running over a, over a year 
Um, and I think we both agreed that, yeah, you don't want to be, when you come close to a key race, you don't want to be knackering yourself out in the gym. So that it's almost, you want to almost start off the year or, or when you're not running so much, that's a good time to really build some strength. Yeah. Um, but then keep it more of, more of a sort of maintenance as it goes Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, ideally I would like to say, I'd like to periodize your year. You know, look at the whole year, you look at an annual plan and go, right, when are we going to build? And that's essentially what I have done with you. Uh, uh, when I look at your key races over the year, and I'm in my head, I'm thinking, right, when can I get those key blocks of heavier or more challenging work into demo to create some more work? And then as the rate progresses towards a race, we taper off, we, we, we bring back the, bring the intensity down, we bring the volume down, but we still keep the intent and the exercise is relatively the same, but the, the amount of work you're, put, you're doing on top, you know, we can't afford for you to be cooked, to, to overcooking yourself, in, especially when your mileage is getting up up, up towards the tri- triple figures kind of thing at the end of each week. So yes, you definitely want to periodize. Um, if you do have chunks of time during, throughout the year where you're not, you're not peaking for a race or you haven't, you've got a good eight weeks or 12 weeks, then definitely you should be looking to kind of build up the intensity of your strength work alongside your running volume. You know, you're only doing probably two sessions of strength a week, you know, in an ideal situation if you're running as much as you are. Um, it's the same thing with all my long course kind of athletes or uh, long distance athletes. You're really only realistically getting two to three sessions a week. Um, and actually this is something we've discussed a lot is like <coughs> where in the week do you fit your strength training in? Yeah. Because I think maybe a common mistake is for most of my clients there will be one you know there'll be one rest day where i say don't run and there's a temptation to do your strength work then and i think we both agree you know that should be a proper rest day you shouldn't probably be you know hitting the gym hard then yeah. but then if so when you know what do you do you strength train on harder running days or easier running days or yeah where do you where do i stand on that i mean yeah i think there's a whether it's a running coach or a triathlon coach i think they we all have different and different different strength coaches have different opinions on this but for me it's Again, it's down to be the individual. If you're looking to make a significant change to that, to that individual in terms of getting them over an injury, getting them stronger, getting them more balanced, the neurological load it takes to make significant change to your body. So like you, if I want to like get your hamstring stronger, I can't afford for you to have done a, a got through got, got round a run and then come into the gym and you're coming in to me. Because I wouldn't do that, Chris. No, I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> Only once or twice. Yeah. But it's, I think it's the, the, the you, you neurologically you're, you're, you can't afford to go into a strength program into a strength to go into a, into the gym or, a, or into a strength training program uh, underdone uh, overdone you know like you need to be quite fresh for it because if you want to make significant changes if you want to challenge your body under load you need to be quite fresh for that so I think what I often say is that is that I would say that we look to keep at least three to four hours in between us in between sessions so if you've got a if you've got a run and you've got a you got a strength train let's keep a good three to four hour window if you've got a big major run you're not strength training on that day like it's simple like you really you simply can't you won't have the the mental or the physical capacity to get really any real uh decent work strength work done you know running is your if running is your main discipline then that is what you focus on but throughout the week i would be getting that strength session in uh, either end of the day to uh, to an easier run. Do you take a full rest day? Yes, you could, but I, I still want you to be getting that that strength work in somewhere in that week. So, a lot of the time when I'm when I'm working with time poor athletes, as in they've got tons to do, um, they will I will be using that three to four hour window as as my rule of thumb. You know, so mm. but essentially I'm not a big fan of any athlete trying to do their strength work after their sport, after doing their sport training. So whether it's run, bike, swim, because they generally fatigued the mind then the, the mind's not in it they're not fully motivated and so they're not really going to get the they're not going to get benefits of what they're looking for however if that's all the time you have then there's still some benefits there and that's and that and then that's fine and that in fast of case then that's fine too so but ideal world that three to four hour window between sessions would be would be key for me okay i mean the way i'd look at it maybe is like earlier on in the year give you you know if there is going to be some compromises give your strength work more priority more priority then before the training really picks up and, and maybe later in the year where the running is probably more important than, than it was earlier in the year then maybe that's where you prioritize it over the over the other one a little bit um no but great. yeah all these it. things are a little bit of compromise and and, and stuff aren't they? so but, um, on that point actually I really, it's it's really imp- like when you're working with someone that is running pretty much every day like, i mean do you run every you're running every day usually six days a week yeah, yeah. six days so like 
it, it's quite unknown territory strength you know like trying to like in the strength and conditioning world they're not used you know we're not used to we're not trained as such to uh, work with long distance athletes like all the courses i've ever done they're kind of baffled when i give them the case studies about the athletes i work with their kind of minds are blown because they're used to working with like field-based athletes rugby football where they have seasons on seasons off seasons but like a lot of a lot of ultra athletes they they will run all year rounds they have competitions or events they all they want to run all year round so it's it's no it's not a fixed science there's no like mm. it, people will talk about research and studies and everything else in between but essentially there's really isn't it's it's a new ter it's new new territory as it were so i think what we're doing is like this conversation here is i'm i'm coming from like a science background and like what i what, what i know is is kind of fact but then putting it into into real world application isn't isn't easy like and i think what you're saying yeah blocking it focusing on strength at the beginning of the season and then kind of running a maintenance program where you may be only doing one one session a week mm. and a little bit of mobility work here and there well actually that brings me on nicely to kind of yeah mobility work or stuff people can do at home without weights or what i love is the stuff that you can do for five or ten minutes when you when you're boiling the kettle or maybe even on the phone you know yeah, doing, yeah, doing yeah, some yeah. single leg squats or something what can you know what 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 are great ones to do around the home uh, yep. I don't know, step ups or, or yep. you know, can you give us a few, few of those? I reckon anything to do with obviously again single leg work is going to be huge. Um, first thing if we lose is balance, coordination, proprioception, massively important when you're on, out on the trail or when you're running. Like it's, um, you know, that kind of ability to change direction, load your individual leg. Mm -hmm. So anything that can get you standing on one leg, working on calf raises is, you know, it's the sort of stuff that your physio will give you, but let's up the ante again, throwing your back leg up on, up on, a, on a small step and going into some of those split squats is gonna be, is another great exercise you could, could be doing at home. I guess I wanna give you more than just um, standing on one leg and doing calf raises because that's kind of what they kind of a generic physio program is and when we talk about performance a performance athlete you need a lot more than that so if you're at home dropping down on the floor and give me some push-ups you know developing your body strength is a big has a great transfer over into running why because you you want to hold good positions when you run you should have a good upper body strength as a runner polling using poles all those sort of things so push-ups single leg squats fantastic exercises single leg uh, arabesques um, or deadlifts are fantastic exercises to be doing at home. Okay. So, yeah, what, what would you recommend for someone who's maybe sitting down a lot, you know, um, in the office, perhaps on the, on the sofa or on public transport or in a car? Um, that does seem to cause issue with a lot of runners. What, what, what exercises could they do um, to counteract that? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's one of the biggest problems at the moment, isn't it? Like, people want to you know, run in the morning, go to work which we all have to do or you know they, they have a life, certain lifestyle then they want to run in the evening or they want to get moving again um, so in terms of you should have a dynamic warm-up routine you should have some form of dynamic flow there's so much there's so many good resources out there at the moment where you can just have three or four key exercises that you can string together that take you 30 seconds a minute two minutes and it just allows you to kind of open your body up again like there's so many problems come from the hips especially where it's just again it's like what we're doing now these poor positions that we hold for hours and hours so like standing up getting some range of reaching down towards your toes getting some range of motion through your through your uh, hamstrings through your lower back then going standing up against a, a tree here or, or a wall and opening up the hips doing some kind of gate openers uh, hip openers just moving into a, an air squat you know just doing a, a body weight squat okay. going through yeah. sets of 5 10 15 squats nice and slowly nice wide feet just opening the hips up standing tall squeeze your glutes Do you know just it's very it doesn't need to be over over overthink you don't have to overthink it too much like mm. essentially what you've got to think about is that your hips are everything i mean they if they're stiff and tight you're never going to get that hip hip range of that leg range of motion for when you stride out you're never going to get that glute activation which which what you want when you run so i think as you can always judge a runner or you can judge a person by the way they squat you know like that was obviously probably the easiest way to uh to get an image of how that someone moves by the way they squat and if they can't get their butt halfway towards their knee height as in sitting down they're in that you know that you're going to be working with someone who's probably got uh hamstring issues lower back issues calf issues because they're they're very very tight so um yeah if you're if, if you're at the office stand up every hour or so and do some give me 10 squats 
you know that it's that it's that, it's that simple as that sometimes you know it's not weird yeah just start start the start it off um in the office stand up every 10 every hour or so punch out a set of 10 squats and sit back down again <laughs> and you know it's just a nice way of getting the blood flowing and opening the hips up so yeah all right um one i find especially from people who are maybe new to trails is is they roll their ankles a bit is there anything you can give us for you know how, how would you strengthen someone's ankles so this is all the research, a lot of a lot of conversations happening at the moment about how important ankles are, and, and it, it sounds weird, but you know when someone goes into a, like a, a clinic and they'll say, I've, I've, "I think I've done something to my knee," Every, you know, the, the physio will pan. Everyone kind of it's, it's like a red flag. Mm. You know, people will be like, "Oh, crikey, you know, is that an ACL? Is that a, a ligament?" When it comes to ankles, someone might sprain their ankle and they're not too. They don't mm. overthink it too much. They yeah. kind of they're like, "Oh, you'll be all right. Just rest it. Put some ice on it, and it'll be fine." Ankles are now becoming obviously people are realizing how important ankles are, um, as in in terms of developing the strength. So straight away, certain things like just actually getting some ankle mechanics, like just working on dorsiflexion and plantiflexion, putting a resistance band over the top of your toe, mm-hmm. attaching it to a, an upright, even up under the desk. You know, just working on that on that plantiflexion, dorsiflexion, working on the angles of the foot. So you're just developing up the, developing the ligaments of the of the foot balance work you know like it don't underestimate the the fact of just being can you stand on one leg comfortably can you move through range of motion can you can you do that kind of star excursion test you know i don't know if you've ever done it when you stand on one leg and you have to reach yeah yeah from different points with the other foot just things where you were looking to develop it and then and as you go you start to load that ankle so again putting weight you know holding weight going into those single leg exercises again because essentially you're trying to develop your ankle strength not just isolate in isolation you want to develop your ankle strength as a whole so again going back to things like loaded squat loaded single leg squats loaded split squats so just things where you really are putting load and weight through them in a controlled environment so that when they so they can allow them to get stronger so that when you start running the trails they have that ability to they have that they have that deep that depth of strength to be able to handle the the undulating ground you know what i mean that makes yeah sense? no that's great um two other common complaints are probably probably knees is, is a, a big one i mean i never get issues but some of my clients do you know what would you what would your be suspicion of of someone who's getting knee issues other than it could you know t- <coughs> could come into it oh, yeah. um but there's probably some f- some fixes you can suggest i'm guessing and the other one is probably how do you get stronger legs for for the long descents that we get uh, often in european mountain races um what would be your suggestions there uh, knees is often I my personal belief is a massive is just a massive imbalance in the legs. So like you, again you're running very heavily. You you're utilising a lot of one one muscle group. Like you're you're relying on your quads to take all the work, and you haven't got enough of a butt, and you haven't, haven't haven't got enough glutes and hamstrings to support your legs. So your knees and your quads take all the action. Um, and again that kind of goes on nicely to your question about downhills. Like it's the same principle. Like you've got to have balanced strong legs i mean the strongest runners i work with have a depth of strength to their legs that they don't even realize like damo walked into the gym and he's moving body weight his own body weight in in weight for fun um same with a few other top ultra athletes and that's the thing like they you're balanced and you don't even know it you've got a nice balance to your body and whether that's because of soccer whether it's football or you know the whole the hiking you used to do Mm pre-running or just the way you've progressively built your distance up but um knee pain so many people just have are very tight through the hips they don't have much of a glute they don't have much, much glute strength hamstring strength and so all you've got to imagine is all that load is going through the fr- is, is is going through those quads because that's what your your body's used to using a lot of and so what we've got to do is bring more strength and and stability through to the knee by developing other groups of muscles so my tip would be to start developing those other muscle groups who to bring support to the knee I broke this knee twice and I lost all the muscle both on this leg twi- two years in a row and my obsession was getting that muscle tissue back because I knew that the only way this knee would ever feel somewhat safe again was if it um, had muscles, muscle surrounding it. Yeah. And then going into the downhill stuff, I mean, that's, you've got to have strong legs like this and you've got to practice it i mean you've got to have i mean you've got to allow your body to get conditioned to that mm. the impacts we talk about plyometrics you know when we do like our jumping work and yeah. Our, the, that, yeah i hate that stuff yeah okay <laughs> well the only reason we do those 
big jumps or the broad jumps or like the high jump to, to landing is because we're trying to reintroduce um, those types of impact mm. and seeing how your body handles it and we're trying to develop it and, and challenge it and, keep, and build it, build it, build it up. So there's numerous ways you can do that, but essentially you're trying to build up the conditioning of that leg. So it's a, it's a fine line and that's what I think that's what strength training does it, you can you can kind of cut corners because uh, you don't really want to be telling a new runner to go start running down lots of downhills because mm. they're probably going to get a load of doms they're probably going to smash themselves yeah. aren't they yeah. so I think I uh, I think I just and that's why I like strength training that's why I'm a big prof, you know, I'm, a big, I'm a big proponent of it for, for runners is that it allows people to kind of cheat the curve a little bit you're able to get ahead a bit by if you can develop stronger legs you, you've got to find that you're able to handle those declines a lot better a lot of descents a lot a lot easier because you've got a lot more strength and stability in those legs yeah Does that makes sense yeah it makes good sense um i think can i ask you a few questions yes i was just looking at my list oh revenge time no i, I, got... I, think, I think i'm done with my list yeah so like it's i guess when it comes i have a lot of a lot of um athletes that i work with and it's amazing how many of them just running off the cuff. They, they run, they run, you know, I asked them what, how the, you know, what, what program they're following, do they run with a coach? And a lot of them are running off or using a program they found on the, on the internet and they've been using it for a number of years and it's based, sometimes it's based on time, sometimes it's it. But what, this is quite a generic question, but what sort of program, you know, how, how would you, uh, what would you want a, a runner to start with like, in terms of a program? Like what, what best... It always depends sort of where they are now, but I'd love to get people to, I mean, once you're running five or six days a week, you know, if you can do that regularly and, and mostly easy, um, you know, if you can do that over a period of weeks and months, that's going to build a really nice, safe, gradual fitness. Um, always, always, just like you do with the strength work, it's always gradual progression. You know, there's always a clear idea of how to progress, but you gradually, because injury and running is, is you know, quite, quite common actually, but if you, if you do it sensibly... Um, it should, you know, it shouldn't happen. Hopefully, um, you have that. You have a quite a good model about the way you approach it. But what's that model you follow? Yeah, you follow. So, I really, I, it's quite simple, but it's really effective. I yeah, think. Yeah, there's a really good. This comes from British Athletics. Um, there's a really, you know, you should think of it kind of medium week in, in terms of volume, harder week, harder week, easy week. So it's kind of step, step, step down, and that easy week is where you're getting stronger, where you're recovering, um, and that's a really sensible way to follow it all the way through the year, really. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I do that with all my clients. I do it myself. Um, I think that, and you, you in strength training, is that like a deload sort of, you know, there's, um, yeah, it's a smart thing to do otherwise. And I, I've spoken to people who have gone, you know, 50 miles, 60 miles, 70 miles, 80 miles injured, you know, because they just go more and more and more. And that just, your body just can't take more and more all the time. No. I mean, so the yeah, deload, you need that deload to allow, allow for like adaptation and all mm. that muscle, mm. all that muscle well, recovery, just basic, basic recovery to happen, aren't we? Yeah. No, it's really important. Really what important. Um, would you say in terms of like, Ultras. I mean, uh, the the word ultra is so uh, broad now, isn't it? I mean, mm. it, is it anything from a was anything above a marathon? Isn't yeah. It? To to the, the longest in the world is three thousand one hundred miles. Uh, Seriously? <laughs> yes. Seriously. It's in New York. It takes place. It's called the Self Transcendence three thousand one hundred mile race. It was oh. around the same block in New York for about a month. Oh my word! Shall I sign you up? That's in May. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, it's quite a unique one that. So that's a, quite a small field on that one. <coughs> yeah, that'd be, <laughs> how do you even get it? I don't, that's insane. Yeah, because okay, a few of our, I mean, I guess when it comes to like getting into ultra, I'm actually a massive fan of it. Over the years, I've, I've learned to love it simply because of it actually takes away time, the, the pressure of time. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like this yeah, is you're hardly looking at your watch. You're not worried. You know, you finish a marathon nowadays and it's like, what was your time? That's the first thing you're asked. Yeah. And if you're a minute behind your time, you like somehow you failed, like or a few seconds it can be, and that's. Um, Do you have an obsession uh, obsession with it? Do you think about time when you run? I mean, like some some races you, you probably do, but do you think I, about just position wise more than anything? Yeah, that's a great question. I suppose I, I have got into the habit of doing one or two races over and over again, so you can't help compare your previous time then. But of but I I've always been more excited about. Uh, position in the race like can I yeah. get top 10 can I get top 5 can I get top 1 you know um, we don't really compare the time I mean times are, it's kind of almost no, irrelevant it isn't it be, the terrain can be different to the previous year the weather <coughs> um, so many things can be different that it doesn't really doesn't really compare even though you know you have course records but often people know they're kind of you know not really a fair judgment uh, it's so good isn't it I mean I, I've been when I first got into working with ultra athletes I was you know everyone was like that's crazy that's, that's <laughs> mad but actually 
the more you understand it, the better I actually find it. As long as the, the individual has like a right temperament towards it, as in the right mindset towards it, as in they have no, they're not obsessing about time. Actually, the fact that you can walk, run, jog, mm. you know, you have to scramble sometimes. It's, it's actually, yeah. you get to eat, you get to fuel appropriately, hopefully. It's actually, and it's more adventure, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. No, that's our, big, our big secret is that, especially in the lumpier ones, a lot of it's hiking or, or power hiking. Um, well, a lot, yeah. It could be up to 50% of the race could be power hiking. Um, and yeah, aid stations are amazing. You just sit there, stuff your face. It's great. Uh, and usually you've got all the time in the world, pretty much. You know, to, to, you know you've got 20, 20 hour cut off or something, you know, so you, you just relax. It's just a fun day out somewhere beautiful, really. You know, you know I've done one. Did I tell well, you? Which one have you done? I did uh, one in, on the Gold Coast in Australia. It was called Kokoda. It was like a, it's a tribute. It was a tribute race to the Kokoda Trail in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. But idiot here had only ever run best part of a half marathon distance <laughs> before that. And they were doing it as a team of four and <clears throat> I did it simply because I wanted to see what it was like to run through the night. That, and I, that it destroyed me obviously. I mean, I was, I was completely, <laughs> completely, you know, just uh, underprepared and, but like, what's, what's it like running through the night? Like, I mean. Oh yeah, that's my favorite thing to do almost. Like, um, especially if you're, yeah, you know, I know in the mountains and the stars are out and that sort of thing. And it's, you know, it's quiet. It's just you and your head torch and occasionally another runner maybe. Uh, I love that side of it. Um, obviously it can, you know, it could piss it down or, or be hailing on you or something occasionally, but um, you hope that's not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, that's another element of the sport. You know, I've been out in the night a lot more since I've been a runner, you know, and seen more sunsets and more sunrises. So it is a sort of hippie sport. It's, it's about being in nature. Um, yeah, I love all that stuff. Yeah. It's cool. So if you're starting, if you've just done a half marathon, just done a marathon and you're thinking about doing something a little bit longer, a bit more adventurous, like, how would you go about kind of getting more so if you've just been doing a lot more road running how would you kind of go about getting into trails like doing more trail based or ultra distances well the first thing i'd say is quite a lot of quite a lot of people do a first marathon for example and think i couldn't possibly run further but actually number one in ultras you run you just run slower like you just slow down you're not trying to get to your um your sort of peak speed that you can maintain for that time um so it, i'm not gonna say it's easier but like a 50 mile ultra marathon might not punish you as much as a, a 26 miles on a road um, I think the first thing is you, most of them are on trails. There, there are some on tarmac. Um, I get more used to trail running because it's yeah, it builds up a bit of strength, um, and it, it can be a bit slower. So it's good to get used to that. And probably you're going to spend a bit more time on hills. But also my favourite thing, practice eating. So when you as your run, runs get you know longer, you're going to need some a bit of proper food after a while. You know if you're out for three or four or five hours. Um, but that becomes a skill in the sport, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got to be able to get the, the get the fuel in. So yeah, practice shoving chocolate and cake in. That, that's one of my favourite parts of the sport. It's, um, yeah. I think last one of the things I want to talk about. Last thing I wanted to, I wanted to talk about was um, that having a team around you. Like I mean, you've obviously I mean you've got Rini McGregor as well involved in what you do. Like and um, you've got you work with the physio. Have you got a physio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and a physio. Yeah. So I mean, like, is, do you think? I mean. I know from my personal experience, like working with, I, li I like having other cl uh, professionals around my, me and my athlete, the people I work with, because it empowers me. But like, what, what, do, you, how, what do you think the benefits are? I mean, do you, would you agree with this? It's important to have a, a team of people around you to help you? Yeah, I mean, one of the problems with, say, the internet is it, it can be helpful, but it can be just bewildering because, yeah. and especially, you know, post, post a quick question on a forum and you get 20 different replies. And in a way that's not helpful, is it? That just no. confuses you. So I've always thought, go to an expert. Um, I've known Rini a long time, um, not, not, not known you so long, but you, you've brought a whole new element to my training. Um, and it, yeah, I've just gone to experts rather than mess around with, with you know, Freddie, Freddie on the internet forum. Yeah, it's, um, it's tiring, go isn't to it? A, yeah. yeah, go to experts if you can. Cool. And, and hopefully you're getting, yeah, well, you are getting better advice that way. Yeah. And yeah, it's good to have a team. It's good to be a bit accountable and a bit bounce ideas and, and get someone to objectively look at your training. Um, and that's definitely helped me. Right from the beginning, I've had a, I've had a coach. Um, You've also had a coach, haven't you, all the whole way through? Well, I've, I had two years just... where I was self-coached. Yep. Um, okay. And I did things a bit differently and some of it worked and some less so. But I've, had, I've actually had five running coaches. Um, not because I fall out of them necessarily, but um, yeah, no, I, I'm just fascinated in yeah, getting expert views. Um, there are some good books and good podcasts, but yeah, if in doubt, go to an expert, I think. But it's, um, it's worth having a coach just to have a sounding board, someone to maybe just be a conscience, a secondary conscience for you. I mean, like, I, I don't know, like, I mean... Well, often it's sometimes, for ultra runners, they, they can be quite excess, obsessive or quite extreme-minded anyway, so they want to, one of the big things is they, they're often trying to do too many races. Like, of course. Oh, should I do this race? Could I fit that? Could yep. I fit that 100 miler in between the other 200 milers in the three weeks? Um, and really they know they shouldn't, but they just want to, someone to, to say, 
maybe you shouldn't this or just year. streamline it a little bit because it's nothing worse than kind of trying to do everything and you end up doing nothing or half the things you want to do yeah or just not very well and not, just burning yeah, out burning out and, yeah, yeah getting and, sick and or injured and yeah yeah um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of experts. Donald Trump may, may not be a fan of experts, but uh, I think they're useful still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> made it, made it he made it, made, <laughs> got it in there. Um, cool, I'll be good. Do we agree? Do we, do we, any, any other questions you've got there? I don't think so. I think that's about it. Cool. Um, All right. Yeah. Nice. No, well, guys, I hope, hope you enjoyed that. It was just a little quick little chat between me and Damo. Series one of Chris and his bench. Oh, I don't know, Damo. <laughs> we maybe, if you, like, if you like it, we'll uh, come back again, shall we? Yeah. It's a nice spot. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks again. <laughs>